why conversations end up in the graveyard. These are a few things. I'm gonna go over a few of my texts and three of the reasons why combos end in the graveyard. And I'm also gonna go break down a client, just a quick interaction, show a, a problem that's very common that guys do. So let's get into it. So the first thing is being too logical. So you can see in this example, this is a girl that I knew from before, from a while ago, and she had matched with me on Bumble. And of course, she was trying to make the conversation way too logical. And I didn't really care that much about it. I wasn't really that interested. So I just kind of gave kind of like the hot girl answers where I'm not giving that much. I'm just kind of going with the flow, not putting in too much effort. But this is something that if you guys are doing, you want to break out of this logical back and forth. And I'll show you in a second how to do that. And she says, hey, stranger, Drew, you call us meeting in 2012. Um, and I said, oh, we had a mini wine date. So I remember. She says, yeah, ended up coming to my place. Yep. And I said, yep, good times. So I'm kind of doing like the hot girl thing. Not really that interested. I have a lot of matches and uh, I wasn't too interested. I'm just being friendly and same thing that girls do. And they don't give much. And it just stays in this logical place and it's not going to go anywhere. As you'll see, it dies out. So I say, I'm doing fantastic, doing a little workout, enjoying life, texting you like it's 2012. She sends me this long, logical thing. Have, how have you been? And I said, I gave a logical answer. Just there's nothing between me and her. It's just all logic about stuff that has nothing to do with us. So when you're texting a girl, you want to make it between you and her. You don't want to... That's why you can do role play where you can be like, if she says she's bored, you can say, I have an idea. How about me and you meet me at the airport and we'll take a trip to Miami right now. So of course it's not going to happen. You're not being serious, but it's a playful thing that makes it with you and her and then a role play. So you don't want to say, you don't want to just be logical the entire time like this. Like, how have you been impacted by the everything that's going on. And then I say, oh yeah, a lot of time to drink wine and do nothing. How's it been for you? She gives me this whole long answer and there's nothing playful. It's just all just logic. And then I say, oh, that's rough. Sounds like you definitely need a vacation. Um, and then that's where it ends. So the convo dies because it's a boring conversation. And I didn't ha really have much interest in making it interesting, but you can see where it it's up to me or it's up to you, up to the guy to lead the interaction, to make it playful. That's why it's so important to learn how to text the right way and how to, to make the interaction better. And I'll show you that in the next example. But this is one of the biggest things. It's too logical. It's too just logic is boring. And when you're on a dating app, and the same thing with me when I'm on the app, I'm expecting a girl to be fun, to be playful, to be silly, to joke. It's not really the place to ask, oh, well, what do you do? What do you like to do for fun? What, where'd you go to school? What'd you, you know, like the usual, the usual questions, it's not really meant for that. Usually you're playful, you're fun, you're flirty, you're doing role play. And then you say, yeah, let me get your number and then set up the date or the meetup to go over all that other stuff. Because you don't know. Girls ask me all the time. Like oh what do you do? They're just trying to keep the conversation going. But they're not going to learn anything. Based on what I do. I could do. I, I say I run a business. They're not going to learn about who I am. Because of that business. It doesn't matter what the business is. They're going to learn about. What makes me laugh. What sort of. Am I passionate about what. How do I act as a person, am I playful? Am I adventurous? Am I fun? Am I, can I joke around with them? They're going to learn about my personality that way. It's not just fact-based. You can do a little bit of facts, a little bit of logic, but you want to make it more playful. So let's look at the next. This is one I open. I say, you look adventurous. She says, yes, I am. Love it. How are, uh, are you? I say, I live for adventure and spontaneity. So it's always good to frame 
with it or to lead lead with adventure or always frame that she's adventurous because it opens up instead of having a boring back and forth conversation it adds something interesting because you can always talk about travel adventure being spontaneous and then if you're talking about being spontaneous then you can say hey let's you know let's go on a date or or whatever you want to do let's do a virtual date so then she says, any travel plans when it's crazy in a sense and so she's starting off with logic so it's starting off with logic um, boring conversation and then you'll see what I do to flip it around to try to make it more interesting so she says um, yeah tons of travel plans I'm packed and ready to travel the world oh that's what I say at first off anywhere with beaches and sunshine so I'm trying to get like lead towards that role play or lead towards something interesting so I'm giving her some bait where I'm saying first off anywhere beaches and sunshine she says just trying to figure out where um, a beach, spent very much in Aragua, learning to, so she says, learning to surf and need more practice, dying for this to be over. So here, I could go what most people might do, or a lot of people might say, oh, how, how long have you been surfing? What did you do in Nicaragua? Uh, do you like, you know, what is it about surfing? So I could keep going on that logic, but I say, instead of doing that, I try to make it more interesting. I say, oh, really, I'll trade you dance lessons for surf lessons. So now I'm making it playful and I'm adding in the DHV or the demonstration of higher value by dancing. So I say, yeah, I have, I'll dance, give you dance lessons for surf lessons. And she says, deal. And then, uh, let's see, she says, deal. And then back to logic. So what are you doing to keep busy through this? Are you working from home? See you travel work. So She's trying to go back into the logic. I'm trying to make it fun and playful and silly. And she's going back to the logic. So if I keep going on this, if I answer, so what are you doing to keep busy? And I say, oh, I've been practicing guitar. I've been working on my business. I've been uh, running a lot, hiking a lot. So if I just say that, she might it might go one more text and then it's going to die. And she's not going to know why. But as someone that practices texting that that tries to understand the psychology behind it we know and you know if you're watching this video that it's going to die if you keep being logical if i say that to her she might say one more or a few more maybe one more text but if if i don't do something to make it more fun and more interesting it's going to die and if i don't lead it between us doing something me and her so that's why i say i'll trade you dance lessons for surf lessons so now we're doing something together. It's it's like a role play thing, but it's us together. It's not just facts. And if he, if it keeps going that way, the conversation is going to die. And now we talk about. So the first tip is try not to be logical. You need to mix in some logic, but also fun and playful text. Text that are a little bit more interesting, more about you and her, what you guys are doing together. You can do a role play. They're always good. But it's, you want to talk about you and her, what you guys can do or, or talk about you guys together do, or, you know, talk about you two as doing something, not just like, what do you like to do? What do you, where'd you go to school? You know, stop, don't just ask logical questions. Talk about you and her in the world, you know, if, if that makes sense. So the next one. So. If this is uh, the next thing is the next thing that leaves uh, that leads um, text to the graveyard is going for the close or going for the number or the meetup too quick. So I'll talk about this meme in a second, this Ryan Gosling meme. But this is a client text, um, and she says, or just goes romantic adventure in Paris. So she stops responding after that. So that's why he sends the meme to get her attention, and I'll show you that in a second. But then she says, hey, and for whatever reason, she goes, can you make a poem about me? So instead of going on that, instead of acknowledging what she said, at least having a somewhat of a conversation to be playful to set it up, he says, let's have wine and play Jenga with a lovely view from my apartment. So that would be a text, maybe five, six texts from now. So she says, can you make a poem about me? And then he should go on that thread a little bit and say something like 
uh, just a play, he should just do like a playful poem, like uh, something like, let's have wine, or <laughs> he has to come up with, you have to be a little bit creative, but he should take a second to think about it, I can, I'm not thinking about it right on the spot, but he should acknowledge what she just said about making a poem, instead of going right for the clothes, right for the, let's have wine and play Jenga, which is a fine line, it's a good line to say, you have to build up, you have to build up to that. So acknowledge what she said and he, he can be like, I'm not really, uh, you know, I'm not really into poems, but I could, uh, I'm not really, I'm not really poetic, but I'm actually my, um, so you could be like, I'm not really poetic, but my hips, uh, I, um, Po- All right, I'm not really poetic, but I have poetry in my hips or something like that. And then you could be like, she could be like, what do you mean? Or something like, but he could say, oh, I do, I dance or I do. I, for me, I could say, yeah, I have dance moves. So he'd be like, I'm not really, I'd be like, I'm not really good with a pen writing poems, but my poems are written on the dance floor. So something like that to get her interest. And then I'm just thinking of the top of my head. And then it could be like, so I acknowledge what she said. And then I'm adding the DHV of me dancing. And then we could talk about dancing for a second. And then I could say, um, so by the way, so, okay, by the way, do you like wine? She could say, yeah, do you like Jenga? And be like, all right, well, how about this? We split a bottle of wine and I show you some dance moves at my apartment or something. Like, I have to think about it for a second, but you see where I'm going with it. You can't just go right for the let's have wine and play um, play Jenga at my apartment. Because she said can you make a poem about me? And he just goes right to that. It doesn't make any sense. So he has to at least talk about what she said and then continue. So the next one, so being too logical, not, uh, uh, being too logical, going for the close too fast, which he did there. So you need to work up to getting the meetup. So go slower, um, hint at it and have her, um, acknowledge that. So be like, are you adventurous? And she says, yes. I'd be like, okay, well, do you like wine? Yes. Okay, well, we should uh, have wine and play Jenga. So you're like building up to the meetup. You're not just doing it like that. But there are situations where you can be a little more direct, but in that case, you'd want to acknowledge it. Now, for this one, the other tip, the, so the three things that lead text to the graveyard, the third one is not being persistent enough, not... It just quitting, just giving up, not being persistent. So here's a girl that was texting. And so this was a girl from Bumble, I think, and then had her number. So I text her. She's quick on the text. And then I say, yep, everything you've ever fantasized about coming true. And she liked it. So then a day went by or whatever, a couple days. And I did the Ryan Gosling, hey girl. That got her attention again. She says, ha ha, hey. So most guys are, a lot of times you might just want to give up. You might say, okay, she didn't give me anything. She gave me, sent me three emojis, liked my text, and gave me nothing to work with. So now I'm going to engage. So I don't give up that fast. I, I'm persistent and I re-engage. And a good thing is that Ryan Gosling meme, and that's what um, he did here too, it usually works pretty good. So that, but you don't need to copy that meme. Do the exact same exact same thing. You just want to understand the concept about being playful, being flirty, being fun. And that it's not that meme specifically, but it's the idea of it just adds something fun and playful. Again, um, uh, so I she messes me or she messes me. I message her. She doesn't respond back. So I send her that meme. And she's LOL high. So again, not quitting, not giving up. Sometimes you might be like, eh, she didn't respond back. So I'm just going to quit. I'm just going to give up and not do, you know, not even try. So even for me, the girls that get my attention the most on Bumble or anywhere are the girls that put in effort. If a girl messages me and then for some reason I stop messaging or I, I'm texting, messaging someone else and then I forget about it and then she re-engages with me. Then I'm like, okay, she's interested. She's showing me that she's interested. She's being persistent. She's she's putting in effort. And that, that goes a long way, especially as a guy. 
um, are attracting a girl, it's good to put in effort. It's good to show that you're being persistent. Uh, that's good. So, I mean, eventually it, it comes to a point where all right, it, it's either going to work or it's not. So you, you can't just keep going on forever, but don't give up so easy. And this is another example of perfect example of being persistent. So I was supposed to meet up with this girl and she said, uh, sorry, with the restaurant, they asked me to be here all week. So we were supposed to meet up. And then she said, all right, I can't because the restaurant opened after be her week. And I say playfully, oh, at the restaurant 24 hours a day, that's rough. So kind of teasing her like, yeah, I know you're not, you're not at the restaurant 24 hours a day. You can still meet up. So she says, I have another job in the morning. I work, blah, blah, blah. I work as a chef. And then I say, ah, so no time for handsome guys from Bumble. So still being persistent, being playful, not being too like needy or desperate or like begging her to hang out and just say, oh, at the restaurant 24 hours a day, that's rough. And then I say, no time for handsome guys from Bumble. And then she says, I'm off the week on the weekend. And I say, Saturday could work. So she says, okay. So again, that's another example of being persistent, not giving up and pursuing and keep going, keep trying. So again, the three tips to have a conversation not end in the graveyard. Don't be logical, be fun, be playful, be flirty. The next one is don't go for the close or the meetup or the number too fast. Build connection and make a soft close and then go for the number or the meetup after. And the third one was don't give up. Be persistent and keep pursuing and don't let it die off too soon. Keep trying. Those are my three tips, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below. Any questions, send me a DM on Instagram. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video.